So welcome to this um, webinar. So I'm, I'm um, Richard Beggs. I'm a lecturer in higher education practice within um, Ulster University. And I'm just going to go through the approach that we've undertaken to try and encourage active running that's gone on for the last four or five years. Um, it's been a, a, a long thought out process. Uh, I'm also chair of the active learning special interest group. Um, okay, so just to get started, um, from an Ulster context, Tina's coming. We're moving um, one of our campuses to the center of Belfast. We have four campuses and I'll show you images of them shortly. Um, one in Jordanstown, which is mostly moving to Belfast. This is the artist's impression of what it looks like there. Uh, it's the centre of Belfast. Then we've got one in McGee, which is in Derry, London Derry, and one in Coleraine, which is up the, up the north coast. Um, so this ch change, to a large extent, um, around active running is, is being driven by uh, this change to the, the to the learning spaces that we're having access to. We also have had investment in our learning spaces in um, McGee's up in Derry, Londonderry, and again in Coleraine with new teaching blocks with new, um, more active learning focused um, ways of, of teaching and layouts. But also in our Jordanstown campus, which is transitioning Belfast, there's kind of hybrid things happen there to, to get students and staff to explore the more informal areas that we can use in, in our teaching as well. But this plan I'm talking about now um, is was kicked off by our visiting professor back in 2017, um, Joss Boyce, and she she did a research project and looked at, at where we were in, in regards to learning and teaching and our aspirations, and she identified seven areas for opportunity: um, getting the basics right, improving institutions own learning so we learn from one another and don't work in silos which tends to happen um, a lot and probably is similar in your institutions um, integrating aims and approaches so we're working together um, more fluidly um, supporting and engaging staff supporting and engaging students and expanding and embedding active learning throughout throughout our practices um, and also developing some learning landscape activities so activities that that encourage uh, our staff and our students to to embrace new things um, and try new things but there's three key themes come out of that. Um, institutional culture um, across the board, across all of our campuses. And our campuses are spread across uh, a great distance, um, 90 miles away or so. Um, our staff teaching and learning practices, um, just trying to identify what they are and what the expectations around that are. Um, and the last one was identified as staff perceptions of student learning experiences. I've truncated that to student learning experiences, I think that's more important um, rather than staff's perceptions, what are the student learning experiences um, and how can we learn from that. So whenever I, I, I took over this role um, back four years ago, I, I started working in CHIRP um, and one of my key projects was to take on the learning environment plan and this is the learning environment plan I'm going to go through now. Um, it was a plan to get us ready for moving to the new campus which is meant to be now, September. Um, part of it is open, but the rest is going to open in, in January, slightly delayed because of COVID and Brexit. Um, but it doesn't matter, we're ready for that anyway. So when I was thinking about um, Joss's report, and I'm thinking about, well, well, how can we implement that? Obviously, you hear this all the time, it's all about hearts and minds, but it is about hearts and minds, it's true. So we needed to think about the heart of the matter, which is the learning experience. Um, and think about active learning pedagogies and learning design. So how, how can we um, encourage active learning to happen and how can we um, facilitate our, our staff to design and some, to some extent co-design with students um, solutions. But then again, we want our students and staff confident on board and partners and engaged. So there's more of a less hierarchical um, and more of an equal playing field and we're learning from one another and working in partnership and collaborative partnership. And as I said, we have new learning spaces um, on the different campuses we have, but also the, the, the transition. So if I look at the, the three themes um, individually here, with theme one is institutional culture. So we need a lot of, of flex or flexibility within that around timetabling, room booking, IT support, 
employability internships um, and 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 working with the students union and a lot of those things have happened over the, the last few years um, we've had a new timetable and sit in um, room booking facilities have been looked at and there's more of a joint up approach I think whenever um, I started this I started opening up conversations with the different departments started talking to them um, and it's amazing once you start talking to people what doors open um, and I definitely encourage anybody who's thinking about this just get the pick up the phone start talking to people and doors will start opening and things will start happening because um, silo activity is, is something that um, well our institution is 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 renowned for um, but it's starting to move away from that now which is good so the next theme um, is learning teaching practice so it's theme two and that's all about the academic excellence aspects of it the program design um, looking at the re validation revalidation review process staff induction um, so new staff at start go through a number of, of, of different training courses orientation courses whether it's with ourselves or in the office for digital learning um, our learning and teaching strategies pushing things through our curriculum design principles um, and all that's feeding up um, through the learning landscapes learning future um, into the next thing which is the learning and teaching experience which is the belonging aspect as well that's 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 the the, the kind of front end of it the the cool face of it and you can see here um yeah either side 17 to 20 is when we were meant to move in um but i said it was slightly delayed but that's irrelevant you come up through the middle um learning landscapes features at the bottom and active pedagogies and learning design is at the heart then you're going into the learning environment and obviously the learning environment is split in two and don't we know it from the last year? Um, it's been mostly swayed one way, but hopefully getting back to the two again. Um, the digital and phys physical aspects, but then again, they're split down into formal and informal aspects. So we've got the um, digital, the formal aspects, the VLE, the apps uh, that we have, Office 365, Blackboard, um, OneDrive systems, timetabling banner, all those things. But then the students' own personal learning environment. What, what do they have? What are they using? And it's wide and varied. So, and it's social media, um, Google, Dropbox, anything really that they use themselves. Um, we don't really want to restrict that. We want to just be aware of it that they use their own thing. But when we get to the set of it, um, we've got our formal teaching rooms, formal seminars, labs, computer labs, library, breakout spaces, um, and then collaborative spaces. But then we've got informal spaces, such as any hubs that are on campus. Um, the library again kind of covers both. Uh, any cafes, the corridor, outside, those outside spaces. And you can see um, at the top of this, we've got our staff and students and the, the kind of the focus of this. Um, but we've got low tech, high tech, and ubiquitous Wi-Fi across the board. And these things are things that we need. Um, like electricity, this is what's needed in this day and age. Um, so Wi-Fi should be there. You turn on your device, you have access to it. Now, I'm not saying that you have to use technology in all your teaching, which is, is you don't, um, but if you are using it, then you want to be able to get students to input into it as well. Um, and the technology in the room is there if you want to use it, but it's also low tech. There's also whiteboards and stuff. Um, so it's all about thinking about the pedagogies, um, the learning and teaching strategies that are happening. Um, and then this plan caters for everything that people want to do. The last piece of the puzzle there was just communication and communicating what we're doing and different things. And um, it's the same everyone will have. I think the conferences one was one was uh, hit nail on the head because of COVID, we couldn't do that. But I had other events, webinars, updates, emails. Although emails isn't the best way to communicate, it's still a way to communicate. Um, but then thinking about um, other methods or, or ways we can communicate. And we have with an ulcer an internal staff um, online magazine called Insight and we use things like that, but also toolkits um, and I'll get to them later on. We can share toolkits with people and that's still communicating with them around expectations. So when you see it all together, that's that's the learning environment plan. Um, so starts at the bottom, sound foundation about flexibility, um, communication strategies there, then we're going up through the learning design and aspects that are curriculum design that's feeding into the, the actual learning environment itself. Okay. So that's what we we're aiming towards. But that's well and good having this plan, but how, how do you get staff and students ready to actually do things? Um, so one thing to mention, and I've got here, it's not about GBD. GBD is the Greater Belfast Development. That's the Belfast campus that's been extended um, that I'm talking about. But it's not just about that. It's about our other campuses as well. So it's across um, the institution. It's, it's not just focused on one area. But these new spaces, um, have given us a, a great opportunity to reflect 
and what we're doing and take an advantage of the opportunities that they're they're providing us so we can think about doing things a bit differently um and i think it's, it's helped during this covid period as well but thinking about sequencing our learning activities whether it's week by week and in session they're using different um, spaces rather than just a lecture theater but breaking out and then coming back planning for out of classroom activities so we're not just thinking about class um, so you, you think about the flipped classroom aspects um, encouraging on campus learning so making the campus sticky it's not a term i like but it's 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 making students want to stay and learn on campus um, using technology based self-study as well and using all the spaces available that we have, um, formal, informal, physical, and digital. So those are the things that we, we were trying to encourage. And we've built toolkits and resources around that, and um, I'll share a link to them later. But there were some print materials, but mostly digital, um, so that staff can access them. And they were shared. Um, we, we created a SharePoint site that's internal to Ulster staff, um, where they can get access to all this. Also have them openly available on the, on the, uh, our public facing website as well for anybody who wants to have a look at them. But it's focused around um, the learning spaces, uh, guides and what can be done in these spaces. So thinking about uh, practical aspects, um, the curriculum design, the learning design, um, and then case studies so they can learn from other people. And these cards were just, I'm not going to go through all the cards, but it's about getting the basics. I think that, that one of the biggest things came through um, was the, 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 the ambiguity around some of the terms and, and staff's awareness of what they meant around active learning, blended learning, flipped learning, inquiry-based learning, problem-based learning. And these are just simple cards um, that are A5 in size. And on one side, it breaks down for a student what active learning is. And another, it breaks down for a teacher what active learning is and what's expected, what type of room you'd be using, what technology you expected to use, and those things um, in there. And it goes down to each one of those blended flipped. And that's just about getting um, the basics. And I think um, whenever we have buzzword bingo going about, um, staff can get confused. It does put people off things when they posted it there. Um, but having the, the somewhere they can refer to for the basics and what's expected um, from a learning teaching perspective is there. But that's all well and good. All those toolkits are there. We've got our plan. But then really, at the end of the day, people do these things. We need to get people on board. Um, so we put together a scheme chirp interns which has turned out to be called learning partners um the students wanted to call themselves learning partners um, rather than student champions so that's what they're called now um so we have students who um we've got 30 this year on across our campuses who are helping with learning and teaching aspects um, they're on campus today they're on campus this week um as part of welcome week um and then we have active learning champions who are staff members who are being supported to gain CMult. And there's one in each school who are pushing forward active learning within within their schools, um, trying to encourage that to happen across the board. Then there's other spaces. Um, this is specifically around Jordanstown. Um, I'll show you photographs in a minute. Um, around the learning lab, a space for, for staff to come and play and, and get things wrong before they're in class. And then um, refurbishment of, of 20 other rooms across Jordanstown to active collaborative layout um, so that uh, staff, when they get got to Belfast or whether indeed if they're going to McGee or Korean to teach, that the default layout is active collaborative. So rather than rows, students are put in groups of, of 68. Um, so they're facing each other so they can talk to each other. And um, there's nothing um, more that discourages active running than set out, set out in rows. Um, so it's 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 getting people to, to learn from one each other. We all know that learning is a social activity. Um, so this is our learning partners in the Belfast campus um, that are there. And they all have um, jackets on as learning partners in the back. And their their advice was to walk through their, 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 the first few weeks of term, they're floor walking, um, what's called floor walking. Um, and they're there for first point of, of support um, for staff and the working partnership with 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 our staff after the first few weeks of term they're going to be working on, in partnership with them on projects um that are focused around learning and teaching and active learning specifically um so then they'll pivot away from the floor working to actual projects working in partnership this is to help support the return to campus um post covid well not that we're post past covid but post acute covid probably is the term to use um yeah, so that's them just getting used to the new camps and walking about it and stuff. Um, then 
it's a, a really blurry photograph, um, I do apologise, of some of the spaces in Jordanstown that were that were changed. This was a room that was set out, an old traditional classroom in rows, held 70 people. It's actually quite long and skinny. Um, still holds capacity of 70, but the furniture and tables and it was changed um, to facilitate active learning. Um, this is the learning lab, um, which, which has the same technology that is in the Belfast campus, the immersive solstice technology, wireless collaboration technology. Um, and this is for our staff to come along and learning partner to support them um, in trying out new things um, and wirelessly connect or wirelessly plan their session uh, before they get um, to Belfast. There's also going to be the, these type rooms set up in Belfast for them um, that the learning partners are going to help support as well. And then this is um, one of the new rooms in Belfast. It's capacity of 90. Um, and it's, you can see that's what I mean about set out in an active collaborative layout. Rather than it being rows and rows and rows, it's just set out in groups where people can 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 learn from us, one another and and um, and really just um, learn in in, in a, a great place. And the whole campus is, is set out. I guess um, there's some instances now where, the, where some rooms will be in rows. We have a Harvard style room as well, and um, it's more U-shaped. But this mimics what we've got on our Korean campus campuses. So. Yeah, it's just a fantastic space for, for people to learn. When you walk into that room, um, you know that you're going to be doing something rather than just sitting passively. So I think just before I end, um, I've got a couple of slides to go. Um, context of COVID, learn from the last year and a bit. And I know um, it's all it's been challenging. It's been tough um, for everybody um, involved. but. Um, what I have to be careful of is this: when we're returning to campus, is managing expectations. Um, a lot, a lot of um, um, people would, would talk about the high flex model and different things. I think we have to be careful around that because the, the technologies and the, the, the kind of the pedagogic um, ethos of our campus isn't really around um, isn't really around a lecture recording. Um, it is we're more taking a, a flipped classroom approach um, to it. So. Um, High flex comes with so many different technical issues. We technologically wouldn't be set up to deliver that. Um, we have an opto, we have Blackboard Collaborate, but we, what we wouldn't have is any way to capture the audio in the class um, or even video. So I, I think for that way, we have to manage expectations um, and do things for the way we want to teach. And we don't have the support of staff either. That's true on you. Um, so with that in mind, it's still about getting the basics right. Um, and then preparing for eventualities, which might very well be pivoting online if things go per shift, but who knows at this stage, hopefully that won't happen. Um, yeah, Ian, there's some rooms, um, that's the only one I've showed you there about the rooms. Um, there's other rooms that have multi-projection across the room, um, different points in different places. Um, there was different, different rooms identified um, that we would do. Obviously, uh, the center point in that room it's quite difficult to put multi-screens. The shape of this building, the shape we have, it's not square rooms, they're kind of well, different shapes, but we can only have in that room specifically a um, projector at the front. But when you're designing stuff anyway for, for learning design, um, you may want the constructions at the front. You could be using the AirPods that have devices on the table and they can follow on there as well. Um, but that room specifically only has a projector at the front. Other rooms um, I didn't include the photograph of has multiple. Um, um, screens around the room, so that that is something that that is there. I, I do apologize for not including that in my images. Um, yeah, it depends what you're going to be doing. Um, obviously, um, there is options for having rooms without any projectors in them. Yeah, so that's that's all. That's all good stuff. I think what we want to be able to do is provide flexibility for all our staff um, to. To do what they want to do in the room, I'm not saying you have to do this, you have to do another thing. Um, and, and some of our staff um, would give instructions and then go around the room for students to follow um, stuff. But anyway, I'm not going to hang about on that. I know time's pretty. Just to go back um, to Active and SIG, um, with colleagues here um, on this today that are, that are part of that group, we've pulled together this. Um, it's a blog of such, but there's bit of information in there about who we are, what we do. Um, we're going to have blog postings coming up. We did one last December. Um, we're going to probably follow that with other ones. There's going to be a number of webinars coming up over the next wee while. Um, 
Angelica Vizquez from University of Limerick's doing the next one around um, ABC and uh, her experiences of using that um, learning design and curriculum design uh, aspect. But yeah, if, if, if you want to chat about us or you can join the active learning um, group itself, there's a, a mailing list you can sign up to and join that if you haven't already, please do. Um, but yeah, just a shameless plug at the end around that is we're trying to build up a community of, uh, around this so we can all learn from one another. And as I said, what we've done on our campus um, isn't necessarily the right thing for everybody to do across all campuses. We all do different things in different ways. Um, but uh, it's just about sharing that practice. So um, do I have any questions? I'll bring up the chat. Yeah. Richard. Yes. It's Shane. Shane, I've, go ahead. I've, I have a couple of questions if you'll indulge me. Um, how has you use, uh, sorry, how has UU approached its own learning and changing the culture? Because I know that that's quite challenging in any institution, especially one the size of Ulster. I think that the active learning champions within the school have been, um, have been influential to the large extent. Um, I think COVID has helped. Um, push things forward where people have had to, to do things differently um, and put things online, which kind of lends itself to the flipped classroom to the extent what we were doing over the last year. And it's probably one positive that's come out of that. Um, but I think the cultural change has to come, we try from the bottom up, but it has to come top down as well. Um, and that's where we're getting students involved with the learning partners. And it's a slow process. I guess it's happened over three to four years and we're not there yet. Um, but all we can do is put the, the things in place and encourage people to come along. And the, the integrated curriculum design framework that we have at Ulster, where one of my colleagues, Colette, um, designed, that helps that as well. Because when the revalidation process is going through, staff are challenged to think about um, their delivery methods uh, and what they're doing. So, mm -hmm. so it definitely, definitely does help push that through. But it is slow to go through, but we're definitely changing it. Yeah, I, I love the idea of um, the students acting as learning partners. I think that's great. You know, it's it's one thing when a member of staff says this worked for me. It's when students are saying, I love this approach or, or technique or way we're doing things in class that has a, a lot of mileage. How, how do the students feed that back is beyond just the module surveys? Um, there's, partners. there's learning partners there being evaluated separately. So they'll be asked um, about each of their experiences going along. Um, we have a team site set up for them as well for in, informal feedback as we're going along. So they're all in a team's area learning from one each other and sharing what's happening. Um, so that's in there as well, but there'll be a separate one going to just before Christmas um, and one next year to see how they got on or anything they could um, enhance or want to get involved in more. Great. It's evolving Sorry, too. It's, it's Yeah, yeah. Final question. Um, I know that the, the active learning plan at UU um, very much focused on learning spaces, which is great. You know, those new classrooms that were there are coming online just before uh, I left were great, really great spaces. How has the pandemic and the shift to digital kind of changed or has it changed? Do you use thinking about active learning, um, learning spaces, and has anything that's really worked in the digital side, because we all had to shift online, now it is being considered as really valuable and useful for blended and, and both face-to-face -face and digital learning. Is there any real good takeaways uh, that you've seen over the last couple I think, of well, years? I think the good takeaway and the, the, the push that's coming from, from um, our management is around encouraging staff to, to take the, the flipped approach, um, for, for particularly for large lectures, um, but then using the, the, the space on campus for more activities so that that is pushing that through. And because of COVID, all of our staff have recorded lectures, they've put videos online. Um, so I think that's the, probably the biggest thing for us that's pushed that through and thinking about our learning spaces in a different way, that it's not just about passive dissemination uh, from one lecturer and uh, many students. We know that doesn't work. It's about getting in to do activities, problem-based learning, whatever it might be um, in, in, the, in the class. So that, that's that's where we've, we've found so far. But I think we're still learning. Um, I think this semester we're going to learn an awful lot, really, to be yeah. honest, about um, what has worked on, on it might have worked online, but when we bring it back to this blended approach now, will it work just as well? We'll just have to wait and see. Richard, thanks, Benny. Thanks, Shane. Anya, did you have your hand up? 
I, d I did briefly there, but it was more to apologize to Angelique. <laughs> it's just been a very long week and the high flex thing. People are trying to do high flex without the kit that they need and that kind of thing. So sorry, that was a knee jerk re reaction, Angelique. Ignore me. And um, it's not really a question. It was just she in there. You know, people are just more open to active learning after this last year, because as we all know, we everybody had to jump and it was very painful for everyone involved but i think as, as richard was saying about the culture sort of changing i think with the support and one-to-one -one support that people have had and continue to get i think the culture will continue to change so that's really all thanks Sonia. rod just going to say richard that we, we we've done quite a detailed um analysis of feedback that we've received from our students about their experience of teaching online um, one of the things that we've noticed is that um, the uh, that the fully online provision really widened um, a digital divide that we think mm -hmm. ex existed prior to COVID. But if you can sort of contrast a you know a student who lives at home with their parents as their own bedroom, broadband internet connection, uh, laptop, two screens has all of the facilities at their fingertips in a private, comfortable space to work with a single parent at home, homeschooling two mm -hmm. children with a tablet laptop, connecting to the internet on a 3G connection on a mobile phone. That the reality is that, that you know that their experience is widely different of exactly the same provision. And we feel that in the past, pre-COVID, our institutional physical spaces so our computer labs and our drop-in spaces and informal spaces have provided a sort of a life jacket for those mm -hmm. students who don't have that kit at home. And in the absence yeah. of that during COVID, that gap just got wider. Um, and so something that we have to take on board really is that it's not just about the provision of digital spaces in, within the physical institution to close the digital divide. We've got to be, think about how we provision remote learning in those students that come from more disadvantaged backgrounds and have more challenging and more complex uh, homework in uh, lives to, to, to work around. So it's, you know, it, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that we've, we've taken from, from, from that experience, I think. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a very good point that, um, and ho hopefully when we go back on campus, to the blended approach, um, once when those um, students have access back to those other areas on campus, it'll, it'll kind of work in reverse. But it's good that that's made that aware, you're aware of that, so we you can kind of address that now a bit, uh, even investigate it further. So that's that's great, Rod. Thanks for sharing. Absolutely. Any other um, questions or queries or? Nope. Okay. We're two minutes early, so uh, that's good. Thanks, thanks for coming, uh, and please keep an eye out um, for the other sessions coming up. Um, we're going to have a range of different ones um, throughout the semester. If anybody's any questions or queries, please please come back. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you all for coming.